Hey everybody, Jeff aka G Curse here. I hope you're all having a great uh, morning. It is currently 9.23 a.m. on the 14th of January 2024. It is a very cold and snowed in, that's right, snowed in Sunday here in the city of Kelso, Washington. I hope you're all having a great day. We are currently in the middle of like a, a polar vortex. I think that's what they were refer referring to it here in uh, Washington. I, I'm stuck inside, so basically it is time for another one of these videos. That's right, we have an unboxing and review video coming up. But first, as always, if you like what you are going about to see, I hope that you would uh, like to click on the like button. Click on that subscribe button. Click on that little bell if they still have it. I, I never noticed that they still do the bell. Do they still have the bell? Hopefully they do. If you're on Twitter or X, as the new kids like to call it. Uh, new kids? Why did I say new kids? Fuck it. Uh, I'm hip. I'm hip. I have the X. <laughs> you can reach me at gcurse t, uh, tf. Or, if you always have a question, you can always drop me a line at gcursedtfcollection at gmail.com. So, when I return after this quick commercial break, I will be showing you the figure that I am uh, going to be doing the unboxing of. This figure, it is uh, a figure I already have a couple of, but because it came in a four-pack, you will, uh, you know, you'll get an extra one. So, that... that that you pretty much know who it is. Uh, it's also going to be in the title, you know. It's it's in the title. Fuck it, Jeff. On to the commercials. I'll be right back. When the system of justice doesn't work, Bronson does. When the courts can't do what they must, Bronson will. Bronson. Fighting all the evil that men do. Torture as a political instrument has become a subtle and sophisticated specialty. When the most savage murderer cannot be caught or stopped, there is only one man to turn to. You don't seem like the kind of man that would commission somebody's death. I'm not, but the doctor stands outside the moral laws of civilized people. kidneys and spleen were crushed. His teeth were completely broken. When evil becomes above the law, the only law left belongs to Bronson. What are you going to do? I'm going to rattle his cage. In the execution of justice, there is no executioner like him. <laughs> In the name of revenge, there is just one name. Bronson, fighting all the evil that men do. So, the figure today that I am about to un uh, unveil and unbox for all of you nice people, it is the... Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Troop Builder 4 Pack Deluxe Class Quintesson Trooper. Holy shit, that is that is a lot right there. Um, basically, this figure is... Hold on. Oh, actually, I totally skipped something. I originally paid... Uh, it was originally... It, when it first was sent to retail, it was a Target exclusive. It was under the Buzzworthy Bumblebee uh, product line. Yeah, it was like I said, it's a four pack, and it originally sold for seventy seven ninety nine. I had the red card, uh, so basically they took off three ninety for the savings, and then the tax was eight point two for a total of uh, eight point two 
eighty dollars and seventeen cents. However, if you were lucky and you waited till like, because uh, I, I got this in early October, if I remember correctly, the uh, figure was at the, the not the figure, the box set was actually on clearance for a little bit over, you know, uh, during Thanksgiving. So you may have been able to get it for as much as like, uh, I think it was like 30 to 35% off because it had it on clearance and then you get the target. If you had the uh, target card, you get the discount there, but they also had like an additional, uh, like 20 or 30% off or whatever it was, uh, that a promotion that they were running. So you could have actually saved a pretty good penny. I remember hearing people, uh, pay, uh, paying as low as like $50, for this box set, which is not bad because originally when I bought it, it was $80.17. So this figure, it is actually, and before you, if you're curious here, he is right here. I have the guy right here. He's kind of cool. But uh, this guy is a repaint of the Pit of Judgment Bailiff, basically, with the exception well, maybe, maybe not even with the exception. Okay, it looks like the head is actually the same. I actually have the Pit of Judgment. It's on the shelf behind me. I, it, you can't really see it because it's covered up. But uh, I'm going to be actually doing an unboxing of the Pit of Judgment when it's going to be a, a, like an award, a reward when my channel gets to 400 subscribers. Uh, but yeah, so basically this figure is a repaint of the... Bailiff, which in itself is a repaint, slight remold of the War for Cybertron Earthrise Alicon. Now, there you go. The one difference that this figure has over the Bailiff is that the head, along like with the, uh, the uh, G2 Trooper, and the auto uh, auto trooper is that those three figures actually came with uh, swappable heads, and I actually have the another figure here with this swapped head. Here he is. So as you can see, basically, it's basically. I know you can't really see it that well, but one they both have masks, but one has more uh, kind of a pudgy face, kind of like how I have a pudgy face, yeah. But yeah, so basically the figures look pretty identical. The only the only difference is that uh, the uh, like the bailiff, the Quintesson troopers, the the major uh, major identifier is whereas the Alicon has the short little nubs on his shoulders. This guy has outright spikes on his shoulders. So that's how you can tell the difference. Also, it's a coloring. There are coloring differences. Yeah, let's switch back to... Let's turn these off. Go back to this. Um, I like to think that they took a little bit of the coloring from both of the uh, Alicon and the Bailiff. They took the coloring from both of those figures and they kind of integrated them both together with this, with the uh, Quintesson Trooper. So I kind of like that. But overall, if you have the, if you have both the uh, Alicon and the Bailiff, you basically have the Quintesson Trooper. It is literally just kind of a mashup all together of those first two figures. Okay, but that is it for the oh I forgot I always forget to do that. There you go. But that is it for the Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Troop Builder Four Pack the unveiling. When I return, it will be the unboxing, and I'll show you everybody what came in the box. And uh, I did not really get a chance to show or to announce it because I didn't know I was going to be doing it. But. Uh, when uh, the commercial for the next commercial, I am doing just exclusive Charles Bronson theatrical commercials for his movies. I, I'm a fan of Charles Bronson, and I don't know why, but I've, I've been on a little bit of a kick recently uh, during this the during this uh, snowy weather. I've been kind of watching some Charles Bronson movies, so I figured I would share with everybody some uh, theatrical trailers that I came across. So when I return, it will be with the uh, unboxing and I'll sh you know give you all the information about that so stay tuned and I'll be right back
Death was caused by the severing of the intestines and the major arteries causing massive hemorrhage. I'm a mean, selfish son of a bitch, but I want to kill her and what I want comes first. What's his name? You never say his name. You talk dirty to both of you. Well, if anybody does something like this, his knife has got to be his penis. Where is it? You never made it with a girl because girls won't have anything to do with you. But you get back at them, don't you? Warren, do you recognize this? What's it used for? It's for jacking off, isn't it? Found some blood on your client's clothing. We're gonna rebook him, murder one. You recognize the girls on the pictures, Warren? Look at them, Warren! Look at them, Warren! And what well, I gotta remind you about evidence obtained under duress? It's inadmissible, Leo! When the law protects those maggots out there, you'd think they're an endangered species. Okay, so we are at the portion of the show where I talk about the unboxing, and let's get straight to that, shall we? Because I know that's what you, a lot of you are curious about. So, I'll be honest, I like the artwork for this box, mostly. Uh, I just don't like, as it, it's the same kind of complaint that I've always had when it comes to the Buzzworthy Bumblebee uh, boxes, box art. Basically, they put an emphasis on, you know, figures that are not even part of whatever it is that they're selling. So, for this example, you have the four uh, troop, you know, the, the the four characters. You have the Decepticon Seeker, the Quintesson Trooper, the G2 Universe Cybertronian Trooper, and the Animated Universe Auto Trooper. You have those four, and you have the pictures of them, but then you also have, they also have to share the box with uh, Bumblebee, Megatron, you have, I think Optimus Prime, I think even RC is on, uh, the box on the side, side panels, I, I can't recall, do I actually have the photos here? Um, no, apparently I don't, okay. Uh, so basically, but, to go back to the beginning here, uh, overall, I like the artwork, it's just, I wish that they did not have to rely on the core characters to constantly sell the product because it feels like it's a little bit of a conflict are you selling us bumblebee or, or are you selling us the the uh, the the troopers you know this this should be something that is you know trying that hasbro is trying to convince the consumer to buy and it seems like hasbro slash cargo you know it sounds like they or it feels like they do not have enough faith in what they're actually trying to sell, so they're going to slap the core characters on it. Well, well, we're not we're not sure about you know if people are going to want this set. Fuck it, S slap Bumblebee on it, slap Megatron on it, you know. And this isn't the first time that they've done it. Ever since I've been uh, collecting Buzzworthy Bumblebee figures, or you know figures that are in the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line. I've, I think I first, the first one I really, I think the first one I got was the, uh, maybe, was it under the Buzzworthy? I can't recall if it was, but I actually got a, uh, it was a Bumblebee figure with, I think it was like, uh, uh one of the little wit wikis or whatever the fucking last name is, a little PVC non-posable figure, but the one I can recall that I really, that I think was my first one was the Buzzworthy Bumblebee Blue Streak. And it is just, it's just like it was with this one. You have all the core characters when you should really be focusing on the figure that you're trying to sell. Oh, Blue Shake, ah, oh, fuck that, we got Bumblebee. Let's put Bumblebee, let's put Megatron. And, and it just drives me nuts. Then they do it with every one of these fucking Buzzworthy Bumblebee lines. Yes, his name is in the title, it's Buzzworthy Bumblebee. But you can still just have the title and have the characters, you know, that you're trying to sell. Why fucking shoehorn in characters that are not even being sold in this set you know that's what i'm trying to say so on the top you have uh the i think the top is the alt modes i can't really see here i'm guessing the top here are the alt alt uh mode heads or the alt alternate heads basically now this is kind of uh this is kind of misleading because only three of the four figures here actually have swappable heads uh, the Quintesson Trooper has, Quintesson Trooper, the C G2 Trooper, and the Auto Trooper 
all have replaceable heads. Sadly, the Decepticon secret doesn't, which is a major fucking letdown, you know? Why is it that they could not take the time to do just do a little bit of modification to change the uh head to you know be allow the uh oh the seeker to have an alternate head i think it's because that uh people have made it known that they would prefer the uh oh star screen figure to have i think that he doesn't have a smirking face so that they would get, I think that then the smirking face go to, I think it was like Thundercracker, but they, people made it known that they wanted Soundwave, oh not Soundwave, Starscream to have the smirking, uh, you know, a smirking face. And I think maybe Target and Hasbro did not want to do alternate heads with the Decepticon Seeker here because they were afraid that they were just going to get rid of that Seeker and give the head to uh, Starscream if possible. On the back, you have basically your generic stock photos. They range the the conversions range from a high of 27 for the Decepticon Seeker to a low of it looks like 14 for the Auto Trooper. So basically, you have a little bit of varying uh, difficulty when it comes to converting these figures. And then in the in the box. Each figure was individually uh, secured to the box via uh, paper uh, restraints. This is, like I said, this is one of the issues I've always had. Hasbro does not know how they want to. They they do not have a like uh, a universal way of securing these figures. It's either paper, it's plastic, it's uh, the figure is in a tray that is vacuum sealed around the figure. It's they. I've even seen them use two pieces of cardboard and basically squeeze, you know, not squeeze, sandwich the figure between the two pieces of cardboard. I wish that they would have something, you know, standard, like a standard, you know, instructions because people get people like to have routine basically. And if and also this also goes with the weapons. I've seen weapons secured via plastic secured via paper i've seen them squeezed between two flaps i've seen them taped in the back i've seen them taped on the front i just wish that hasbro would literally start would just just adapt one method and keep it at that because it feels like you're playing a game of whack-a-mole you know also some of these open box you know boxes that the figures have you're not going to know if the if the uh accessory is in the front or if it's in the back and th that's why some i figure feel that some people may not buy some of these figures because they can't see the accessory and if the accessory is in the back but they can't see it in the front they may think that oh weapons the accessories were stolen i'm not going to buy that you know but so basically what comes with the uh quintesson trooper basically you get the mace you get the alternate head, you get the tail sword, and then you get the tail uh, accessory for the uh, alt mode for the Alicon, basically, or whatever you know it's called. Uh, the mace, it's actually uh, painted a different color from what the bailiff has. The bailiff has... Uh, Oh, I don't. I didn't get. Oh, I didn't get a picture of it. There's also like a little halberd or axe or whatever you want to call it. It's right here. You. I. I don't know why I didn't take a picture of it. It's this thing right here. But the uh, mace. It's actually not painted for this figure. The mace for the bailiff was painted brown. So there is a little bit of difference, but it's. Uh, you know, in all reality, it's the same accessory. But yeah. So that is it for the unboxing of the. Uh, uh, the Quintesson Trooper. I normally do not really do it on camera that much anymore. It's just basically, it just takes up too much time, and especially the figures that come in a plastic tray. I don't want to have to subject people to constantly hearing all that plastic, cr you know, crumbling and crinkling. It just, it drives me nuts. So I can only imagine what it'd be like for the uh, viewer having to hear that noise being blasted in their ear. So I don't do that anymore. So when I return, it will be with converting conversion of these figures, 
And uh, so that's about it. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Here's another commercial for a uh, Charles Bronson movie. Climb aboard for mayhem and murder with Charles Bronson. Fact right, is, Major, we have a killer aboard. And behind every passenger lies a secret. I want you to hide me. Find him and kill him. This train is about to collide with terror. I don't know who you are, Deacon. It's like law is who I am. In the heart-pounding adventure from best-selling novelist Alistair MacLean, Break Heart Pass. So, when it comes to converting the... Uh, these figures, or this figure basically, it's the same figure with just a different head. Uh, it is actually pretty, uh, the, it is one of the most simple transformations I've come across in quite a while. If you are new to converting these figures, and I'll, I'll openly admit, I am one of those people. I Until I started doing these uh, videos, I never really com attempted to convert any of the figures. The only figure I really converted was the War for Cybertron Siege Sideswipe because that was, it was pretty easy. And I think this is actually just a little bit easier. So if you are either a, a new a person new to Transformers or you're a seasoned uh, collector like I am, th this will be a good uh, entry point for anybody who would like to learn to convert these figures without feeling like they're being too, uh, too overwhelmed, basically. So let's actually get on with it. So... For for the first time in quite a while, I'm actually going to have. I originally had some photo videos here. Like, you know, I actually had some videos, but I figured that this was, you know, I just wanted to actually show <coughs> the conversion of this figure. So I'm actually going to do it on camera. So let's actually turn that off. Let's get the camera on. This is actually pretty rare. I normally don't do it that much anymore. Let's put the keyboard away. There we go. So I'm actually going to use the this the uh, trooper with the uh, bailiff head, and there is a reason. I'll talk about that at the review in the review portion. So basically, you're going to want to separate the main weapons here. Now the these two weapons actually form a uh, one weapon. So basically, you could say that this is evil fusion right here, even though it doesn't mention it on the. Uh, on the box so like I said evil fusion is a gimmick that does not really need to exist because Hasbro does it all the goddamn time it was a cop-out but anyway now these uh, this is something I you know this conversion is one I actually I did not need any help from like uh, I normally would watch an MGO video for example if I needed help but this is one that I actually was able to kind of figure out on my own. It just took a little bit of time. So the steps pretty much, you know, I think you can honestly do it however you want. So I'm not going to say this is first, this is first, do this, do that. I'm just going to do it, you know, because to each their own, basically. So basically, I'm, I start off by uh, lifting the skirt or whatever this flap is called. I call it a skirt. Rotate the legs and then you flip the skirt all the way around. There it goes. And then you basically have the tab here. I, I know you can't really see it. There's a tab underneath his arm, which will actually tab into a slot that is right here on the side of his chest. So you'll basically do that. Now, it is a little bit tight. Not, just to let you know, it is a little bit tight. There it goes. And if it goes incorrectly, you'll feel, uh, you'll feel uh, an actual click and everything. And you just do it for the, this side also, which, like I said, it, it's just a little tight. And then you also, just, uh, okay, there it goes. This one didn't click that much. It's just a matter of trying to get it in. You turn the, uh, you, I put the uh, hands or palms uh, down, you know, facing down. So we got that done. So we got the waist, we got the arms hooked up. And now we're going to uh, unfurrow the tail. We're going to rotate it. Make sure that the head is... There we go. Now the head actually... Now it's kind of like on a lever system that when you... That should uh, lift and then when you put the head, tail down, it should recess into the chest. It's actually pretty cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, this is where I kind of had some problems. You got to try to force 
because there's two tabs. There's tab here, tab here, and another one on the opposite side. They're supposed to go into the slots here on the chest, but it takes a little bit of effort, you know. So do not be a do not be afraid. Uh, the only thing is that depending on where your finger placement is, if your finger is on like a sharp or a spiky, uh, like on a spike when you're trying to convert this figure, it's it's gonna it's gonna stick you pretty hard. So you got because you got to use a little bit of force to get this thing in. There's one. Okay, ouch. There's. Okay, so if you do it correctly. You should actually hear like a clicking, and now as you can see, it is, you know, it's been secured. Next, you just basically, you know, rotate the little arms, and then, uh, from what I understand, I've heard that people, that the correct, because I did not read the instructions, but I, from what I've heard, the correct, the correct uh, form, or the correct placement, or whatever you want to call it, is you're supposed to kind of rotate, you know, have him have the Alicon have like a little bit of a hunched over look like this. And I'll be honest, I just don't like that to be honest. Uh, basically, because this it reminds me too much of the Shark Decons. And these guys aren't these guys supposed to be a little bit tougher than Shark Decons? So I kind of just I just have him standing up like this. Yes, I know it may not be the correct correct. Uh, Alignment or whatever you want to call it, but I actually kind of like that it looks a little bit more intimidating The only the downside is his arms are just not that big, you know They're just not that big. So but here he is uh, His mouth his mouth is articulated. He can open up pretty damn wide So, you know like he could really take a bite out of something if he wanted to Let, let's see here Can he carry his halibur his little weapon? I was gonna say halibur, but I'm not sure if that's the right turn. Oh, there he goes I can imagine these guys running into battle with their arm, with their weapon in their mouth like this, simply because his arms are just too fucking small. Yeah. You know. But yeah, overall the conversion it is actually pretty fun. It is pretty fun. It is nothing that is too daunting. Like I said, if you are new to converting transformers, either because you're you just never have, or if you are basically a newcomer to transformers. This is a good starting point, you know. I could, I, like I said, I was able to learn everything without needing the instructions or even watching a video from MGO, basically. But that is it. Uh, here's what he looked. Well, let's also get this guy. Here's what they look like in their alt mode and then their primary mode. So that is it. Oh, and you're curious about this guy. This is actually the. Uh, if you're curious about this guy, this is the. Uh, War for Cybertron Earthrise Alicon. So as you can see, you can, here let's. They're basically, you know, like I said, with the exception of like the spikes, and the coloring, especially since this guy has the same head sculpt, they kind of, they basically kind of look the same and everything. So that is it. Uh, with the converting, when I return, it will be my review. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Charles Bronson is Jack Murphy. Stay away from me, I'm He's a renegade cop. For years, he's made his own rules. Have a nice day, Arabella. I eat it, toe jam. Bronson is back. Don't mess with Jack Murphy. But now, he's been set up. We're under arrest, smart guy. Got a dozen witnesses. Ballistics identified your gun as the murder weapon. You're going to jail, Jack. I heard they arrested a cop. What the hell are you doing? And she's his only way out. Someone framed me for three murders. Now they're both running for their lives. Charles Bronson is Jack Murphy. He's gotten out. Now he's getting even. Charles Bronson. Murphy's Law. 
as always, I like to give uh, a little bit of a review with these unboxing videos. Now, this is not like a uh, like an in-depth review. This is basically just kind of my observations looking at this figure. And I give you my positives, my negatives, and some pet peeves. So let's get to that, shall we? So for the positives, there are actually a lot of positives for this figure. Number one, the coloring. I actually like the coloring slightly more than the Alicon uh than the coloring for the Alicon. I'm not sure what it is. It's just that the coloring seems to, you know, pop a little bit more with the G2 or with the uh, Quintesson Trooper than the Alicon. So I actually like the coloring, you know, a lot. Accessories. There, this figure comes with a total of three accessories. You have the main weapon that can break into two so you got a little axe i think this is an axe or a halberd whatever it's called you have a mace and then in the tail you have the tail sword which basically there you go so you get three accessories uh the conversion the conversion was fucking easy like i showed in the previous segment for me it took less than two minutes i mean like it doesn't take that much at all if you are new to collecting transformers or converting transformers this guy is a an awesome starting point for anyone uh the conversion steps are pretty much identical to the alicon from earthrise so nothing really different at all the detailing the, for being such a obscure character i like how they put a lot of uh i think this is an obscure character they put a lot of detail in i mean like the chest it is all detailed. You have details on the arms, on the forearms, legs. I mean, the tail. You know, granted, it's just a lot of spikes. But, you know, they did not have to take a lot, do a lot of detailing. And if the detailing is pretty identical to, uh, with the exception of, like, the, the chest that has been, looks like it's been slightly remolded. It's pretty much the same detailing, which is, it's nice, it's nice. The articulation, so basically the figure has a lot of articulation that you expect. The head can do, it can do about half, ooh, hold on, there it goes. It can only go about halfway, it only looks like 90 degrees, or one, 120, I can't recall what the exact number is. Uh, you have biceps, you have wrists. You have waist, but if you want to rotate it to do a full turn, you have to make sure the skirt is up. Because if you don't, it's just gonna it's gonna inter interfere in everything. There you go. You have a uh, thigh, knee, and ankle. So, like I said, the full range of articulation that is pretty much common nowadays for transformers. Uh, you have the ability to swap heads. Basically, I don't, uh, the other head is on the is on this guy, but basically, it's on this guy. But basically, the uh, heads, which I did not really mention about, they they're different for this figure compared to the uh, G2 and the Auto Trooper. Those two figures, their heads are like on a rail system where you kind of have to pop it out, you know you know pushing it forward this guy let's see can i get it done i don't want to force it oh, there it goes it's basically on a i'm guessing like on a ball joint so it's pretty easy to pop it on it's just i don't want to risk breaking it you know oh, come on because of course now i can't get on <laughs> Okay, I think I, okay, there it goes. It's on a ball joint, so you just got to be kind of careful. Uh, constantly moving it and removing it may stretch the, the uh, plastic, so you just got to be kind of careful about that. Uh, the sword tail, or, or tail, sword tail, or tail sword, or whatever you want to call it. The integration, I like how it can actually go. It, it you know, it. It's kind of easy, you just got to be know what you're doing, you know, because if you don't put, put it in just right, it'll fall off. Basically, I'm trying to do it with my fat fingers. <laughs> the only thing is, it's a little bit tight. There it goes. 
There it goes. Okay. So, you know, it looks nice. It uh, goes, you know, fits in with the aesthetic and everything. So it doesn't look like it's too out of place at all. The plastic feels solid compared to the Earthrise Alicon. I'm not sure if I just had a bad batch, but this figure, I know you can't really hear it, but trying to move things, the the there's a lot of creaking. It feels like it, it feels like it's going to fall apart, you know, the way that it creaks. I do not have that same, you know, same issue with this guy, the, the feels pretty smooth. You can do a lot of movement, and it doesn't creak that much at all. So I'm not sure if it was just bad plastic or if they did something different. But yeah, it feels pretty good. And then, if you're simply just wanting to create an army for your Quintessons, you you know you can't go wrong with these guys. These guys are a good addition if you are into army buildings. It, be it auto troopers, be it seekers being a g2 whatever these guys are a good addition to your quintessons i actually have only one quintesson figure it's in that uh the pit of judgment behind me here actually i'll show you i'll be right back okay everybody i'm back so he, i was mentioning the quintesson pit of judgment here it is uh my i had my friend aaron order this for me and then i paid him back uh but yeah, uh, I have had this, it's never been opened. And I'm like, well, why have you never opened it? And I'll be honest, I just don't know why I never have. But I got it, and it instantly went on the uh, the shelf in my in my bedroom. And that's where it's sat for the last few years. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I plan on opening this as a special unboxing and review when the uh when i get my channel to 400 subscribers i figure it'd be a nice reward i try to do something at major milestones and i what what would be more awesome for a uh you know a special 400 uh subscriber video than the quintesson pit of judgment yeah you know? but yeah so that is it for the positives now as always there are negatives i'm not gonna lie there are negatives the main accessory, so this combination of the uh, mace and the little axe thing, you know, they're, the, the mace isn't that bad, but the axe, it is very flexible, the, the grip is flexible, I'm not sure why they went with that, the, the mace is actually hard, but the axe itself is flexible and I'm not sure if you can really tell but it it's kind of uh, crooked a little bit and that's because it's soft plastic you know like not, I'm not a fan of that it should have been all hard plastic when it comes to the alt mode the arms I feel the arms are just too short I, I understand it's probably not the way that they're supposed to be but how how is it even you know even if this guy was hunched over like how they want him to be I don't understand how he could grab onto anything he'd have to use his mouth basically you know and so it, I just wish that these were longer to be honest you know but then again I'm not in Hasbro I can't tell them what to do damage to secondary head oh I forgot to put up a picture hold on I'll be right back there there's a picture I want to show so stay tuned I'll be right back Okay, so I wanted to uh, basically warn everybody that if you're going to convert this figure into the Alicon, it is best to use the horn, the the head that the the one with the two little horns, not not the one with the fin. And the reason that being is that the fin is just a little bit too long to be used in the uh, alt mode. And as you can see here in this picture, I found I found out the hard way that it crams the the fin or the horn or whatever you want to call it. It basically crams it down, you know, when you convert it. And because of that, the horn slash fin slash I don't give a fuck what it's called. It is actually, uh, t you know, it, it's bent and everything. 
thankfully my guy I've been working on trying to get it straightened out but yeah it, it definitely suffered a little bit of damage so if you have this set and you start converting this figure I highly suggest that you use the alternate head because if you use this head it's gonna bend that fin or horn it's gonna bend it and make it look pretty gnarly so yeah just a just a friendly heads up you know okay so back to the negative so basically there's that there's no new accessories this is the third release of this type of figure you know especially for a, a four pack I was hoping that they would have done something new and then finally Hasbro played it safe with this figure they, they took no risks you know they, they literally took no real risk at all and when you release a third you know third basically the third figure again I was hoping that Hasbro would have done something to justify this figure being added to the set besides the fact that it's a nameless trooper you know give it a different weapon give it a new gun get yeah why not give it a gun the shark studio series 86 shark cons have a gun why don't these guys have a gun you know but yeah so that is it and then finally for the pet peeves these do not impact the figure as always i'm a fan of rub signs no rub sign but then again if there was a rub sign would it be you know normally rub signs are associated with autobots and decepticons so that means that they'd have to do a new rub sign based with you know for the quintessence and that goes into the final uh pet peeve i look on this figure unless if i'm just not looking in the right spot there's no affiliation symbol for this guy this guy's a quintesson hell even on the uh pit of judgment here let's get this on the pit of judgment they have the symbol right there you're telling me you could not do a little uh you know a little uh you know symbol of their of the quintesson symbol you can't do that for the figure what the fuck up is up with that hasbro you let us down again dude what the fuck is up with that but that is it for the review so when i return it'll be my final thoughts and then i'll be it so i will be right back so here's another video from one of charles bronson's movies so take it easy i'll be right back johnson didn't do anything i wouldn't do if i was in his boots and if i thought the killing would stop here i'd let him go charles bronson you can't stop it lee marlin Death Hunt, based on the true story of one of the greatest manhunts ever, and of two rivals who clash as enemies, but in the end, triumph. Death Hunt, rated R. Now playing at a select theater near you. We've gone through the unveiling, we went through the unboxing, we did some converting, and I gave you my final review. Now it's time, my review, now it's time for my final thoughts. Overall, for the price that you're getting, you're basically paying you're paying a pretty good chunk of money for a bunch of glorified red shirts, basically. There's nothing really unique here. If you have the Bailiff and you have the uh, Sharktacon, you're basically just getting a, like a little bit of a hodgepodge of those two characters with the head. And then the, the head is mainly that of the uh, uh, Shark, or the Alicon. And then the body is the bailiff basically but overall it is a nice figure but you got to remember you're paying 80 bucks for or for me it was 80 bucks for four figures are basically red coats there's nothing unique here uh one of the major flaws that this figure has that comes with it's the weapon is the this portion of the weapon is very f soft and flexible it's not that good hold on let's actually switch this out uh, it's soft it, it, and mine is crooked a little bit because of the way that it was packed when it was packed It was stuck at an angle and because of that it is now pretty much going to be forever tilted or crooked a little bit the, I like how the figure comes with the and a, a Changeable head however, like I said if you're going to convert this figure make sure you have either the alternate head or you just remove the head period because as you can see the horn is crooked a little bit because it's the same soft plastic that they used for the weapon 
I don't know why they did that. Also, you're telling me that Hasbro did not, you know, do any kind of test to find out if there's going to be enough clearance for the for the uh, horn. I'm, I expected better from you, Hasbro. I expected better. But ultimately, it is a nice figure. It's just you're going to have to pay over $80, especially if you're buying it now on uh, June. If you see this figure in uh, not June, January 14th, it's the uh, whole box set is most likely going for over, uh, I think I last saw on Amazon for like $120 some odd dollars possibly. So you're, you're going to be paying a, a large chunk of money for a bunch of red shirts basically. But if you're wanting to build uh, build your army, the, this is a good way to go, yeah. But that is about it. Uh, as always, if you liked what you watched, feel free to click on that like, subscribe, and click on the bell. You can always follow me at gcursetf or gcursetfcollection at gmail.com if you want to drop me an email. My next review should hopefully be up next Sunday. Let's see, what is next Sunday? Sunday, it is the 21st of January. So stay tuned, and I'll return then with my next uh, review, uh, unboxing and review. However, if I have several days off because of weather, I may get another video out then. Yeah, might as well keep myself busy somehow, right? My name is Jeff aka Jeekers, and I hope you all have a great day, stay safe, and, you know, be happy and stuff. Oh, fuck it. See you later, guys. Peace out. Are you getting the most out of life? Are you satisfied, fulfilled, happy? Our bank has helped many to a better future. There were 15 murders the first week, and 21 last week in this city. That's a lot. Oh, uh... Paul, how does it feel to be back in the war zone after Hawaii? I was feeling pretty good until I ran into Sam and he delivered the crime rate statistics. My name is Paul Kersey. How's my wife? I'm sorry. She died a few minutes ago, Mr. Kersey. Any chance of catching these men? There's a chance, sure. Just a chance. What's gaining on you, Paul? He's got a corpse down here, one bullet hole in his chest. Good morning, Mr. Kiyosu. And if this person is listening to my voice, I urge him in the name of law and order to desist from this one-man crusade and turn himself in for the police. Who has been placed in command of a police detail assigned to what we've all been calling the vigilante murder. We want you to get out of New York permanently.